I don't know about you, but I didn't want that to end. I didn't want that to stop. God's presence is so good, so rich, so just encasing of us. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, please text us at 407-490-4019. You can also call us at that number anytime if you'd like to reach out for prayer. And now as a church body, we need this more than ever. Psalm 91, let us say Psalm 91 together in His presence. Amen. Amen. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Everybody said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You can give a clap for that. Amen. God's word always deserves a clap. Amen. Well, thank you again for tuning in, and we want to welcome you and everybody that's here this morning, and would like to ask Pastor Shree to come up for our tithes and offerings and deliver us an awesome word this morning. Amen. Awesome. God is good. Amen. Amen. Such a wonderful time to be in the presence of the Lord and Him willing to show up for us and make sure we get the best of it, right? God wants us to have His presence guiding us, directing us, and helping us through no matter what we go through. Mm -hmm. Now, I I look for, again, you know, many of us look for comfort uh, in life, but I I find myself there is no better comfort than in His presence. You know, uh, we live in a world where everything has to make sense to us. But uh, with God, he, he has only one sense that He wants us to live by. That is the sense of faith. Amen. When we have faith in Him, He will make sure all the things that needs to be lined up for us will line up accordingly as He has purposed them even before the foundations of the world. Well, again, thank you so much for joining in today. And uh, I would like for us to get into sowing our uh, tithes and uh, uh, offerings. I want us to, before we get into that, I I want us to uh, think about a few things. Um, Right now we are in our fasting season. We started um, almost uh, two weeks ago. So I would... Again, we have seen so much uh, ever since we started. We have seen so much of attack coming in every different direction. Um, Well, the Bible calls us, consider it all joy. Consider it all joy. So, um, it doesn't make sense, you know, but it doesn't have to make sense. We just follow in obedience. We follow... You know, in our simplest faith where we say, yes, Lord. I'm okay, I'm okay. I mean, I'm not feeling well, but still I will consider it joy. I'm not able to do this yet, I will consider it joy. 
you know, so I encourage every one of us. I know we are uh, uh, getting beaten left and right, which is a good thing. Because the devil sees us as a threat. Amen. Amen. So that's why we continue to stand. Many times when we are being attacked, I just feel so strong in my heart. Many times when we are attacked, we think, why God, why? Mm -hmm. But I'm here to encourage every one of us, because of God, you are attacked, and because of God, you will be protected. Amen. Amen. Because when, when the devil is trying to attack you, he's not just attacking you, he's attacking the one in you. Amen. Bring him out, bring him out. The way Paul said it and declared it, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen. Amen. Should we declare that? I think there is power and faith in it. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Greater is he that is, he that is in me, me than he that is, is in this world. world. No matter what it is, tell it, tell it to that thing, whether it is sickness, whether it is pain, whether it is guilt, whether it is shame, whether it is trouble, whatever it may be, whether it is lack. You know, many times we are attacked in all these realms, so now you tell them, depression, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. You tell them all the time when you are declaring that, what are you doing? You are participating in the war. Otherwise, the war will become one-sided. And we will end up losing. Amen. Even though God has called us to be more than conquerors, and he has assigned us to be victors in Christ, <clears throat> we end up losing because we haven't engaged in the battle. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. The, the devil, ha uh, God has given something. When you get attacked, don't try to... Uh, first resort is let me make peace. That should not be our first answer. Our answer should always be let me get back at it. Mm -hmm. If we don't do that, I'm going to tell you something. The devil will have you in his, at his painting. Mm -hmm. He will control you. We don't give him the rein because he said so. Because he did so. Not going to stop. We just need to continue to have that one thing that I'm calling the bulldozer faith. We are called by God to bulldoze things. We are called by God to bring down some strongholds. So I encourage everyone, let us continue to do that. During this fasting uh, uh, time and prayer, I believe <coughs> the transfer is happening and you guys, you, we are all positioning ourselves to see the Lord of harvest flow through us and flow for us. Yes. We are positioning ourselves in every which way. We don't feel like it, but we are still standing. Amen. We don't feel like doing things, but we are doing it anyway. Yes. You know, the many times I tell you, I don't feel like fasting. Yet we do it. I don't feel like praying. Yet we do it. I don't feel like praising. Yet we do it. That's what is called doing it by faith. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it, yet I will choose to do it. So, uh, um, particularly, mainly, we are, talk, we are praying for our um, church campus, a building where we can uh, call it a, a, a house of prayer because by God said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen? We want that to be a place where it can have that opportunity where prayer will continually happen there. There is so much that we can do in there that I believe is, you know, I also want you to remember this. This is the building that we are seeking for or what God is going to be giving to us is not just for us to go have a Sunday church. Let me be very honest with you. It is not about having a Sunday church. It's about us being involved in heavenly affairs on earth. Amen. That could be our office that we can use to conduct heavenly activity on earth. Amen? Amen? Yes. That is what God, God, I believe God is calling us to be, the representatives of Him on this earth. 
His power on this earth, His strength on this earth, His love on this earth, His authority on this earth. Amen. Remember, He got all the authority, but He didn't keep it to Himself. Instead, He gave it to His church. Amen. I give you the keys. I give you the authority. I give you. Amen? Amen. That's you and me. Yes. There are many people that are busy having the keys of the society, but not the keys of the kingdom. It is time that we move away from having the keys of the society. I don't know, I don't care if I get recognized or not. My job is to have heaven on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Kingdom of God on earth. Yes. That is our business. Yes. And that is what this is for. So, uh, as I was talking about, let us also have our uh, uh, communion elements. I would like for us to have our uh, confession and uh, partake in this uh, communion also believing that God is working in us. I'm praying that you have added to that list that we have given uh, uh, all of you. If you need a copy of it, still it is not too late, let us know. There are people that are praying even from different countries that are joining us at this hour. I am very thankful for that. No matter what you are doing, how far you are doing or how little you are doing, that's fine. This is not about sacrifice. Let me be very clear. This is not about sacrifice, but it is about you drawing close to Him. Yeah. This is, that is our focus. Oh, if I starve myself to death, God is going to hear. No. No, that is not how God, God works or operates. He promises, if you draw near me, I will draw near you. The time of fasting for all of us is that we will be we will be drawing ourselves near to Him so we may hear better. <clears throat> He's always speaking. He has the voice. He has the direction. He has the instruction. He has the wisdom. He has the favor. Unseen favor. You know, there is coming some things that are happening, going to happen in our life. I know that in the spirit realm. We are being positioned, we are being challenged, we are being uh, uh, um, put in a place by God Himself that we may channel all those things. My faith is stronger today than before about those things. The divine transfer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So with the church, this is what we are confessing every day. I, I just want to uh, reiterate this again. Covenant Fusion Church, multi-purpose building. You know, God promised for us to own things, so I'm believing for an own one. And it better be a debt-free one, because by God said, Oh, nobody, nothing but love. Amen? Amen. I want, I mean, when people come into our congregation, I don't want to, you know, so far Covenant Fusion Church never begged for money. We never try to manipulate anybody to give anything. We, we try to stay like that and never once. This is one thing I made a covenant with God. If you want me to preach full time, if you want me to do that, don't ever put me in a place where I would compromise your word for some money. Amen. I do not want to be in that place. I pray I would never be in that place. I fight with all of my faith I have to stand against it. I love you, but I don't care for your money. That is not how we, we should be operating as a kingdom of God people. We operate because God called us to do it. Amen. 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 So uh, that, that's what we are being equipped with people, 100 to 1,000 and things. An existing church is fine. I'm fine with it. Whatever he has, I'm, I'm here open. Right? Are we open with that? Yes. The main thing that I ask, the last thing that I ask, convenient access. Convenient access. So we will have all these things. I want us to believe in this, believe God, that this is happening to us. This is happening to us. And I've, I've been praying and believing that he would make it plain before the end of our fasting time. All right, so I'm going to read the list again. Let, let us come in agreement. Covenant Fusion Church multi-purpose building. Own one. 
debt free, equipped with people, 100 to 1,000, and things, an existing church is fine. Convenient access. Glory be to God in heaven. So, Father, we come in agreement with your plan, Father. And we come in agreement with your will and with your purpose on this earth. There is nothing that is an accident for you. You have ordained and foreordained even before the foundations of this world. We receive that ordination into our lives, Father. We receive your protection, your provision into our lives, your guidance, your wisdom, your favor. Connect those dots. We continue to charge the angels to bring that building forth for us, to bring that ministry forth for us, to bring the people forth for us. Whatever you have charged, Lord, all of it. We want all of it in the name of Jesus. Oh, we don't want to miss anything, Father. What good it is if we don't eat the good of the land in the living, Father. We receive that. We receive that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, minister unto us that you may be glorified through us. You promised in your word that Father will receive glory when we bear much fruit. Oh yes, sir God, we are positioning ourselves to bear much fruit, Father. You are the God of abundance. You are the Lord of harvest. You are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. We serve you and we serve you alone. And we bow before you and before you alone, Father. We even bring our tithes and offerings to you, Father, that you may bless and multiply so you would be glorified through that, Father. And we bless you, honor you, and praise you. We continue to speak your blessing upon us, upon our children and our children's children, Father. Everywhere we go, everything we touch shall prosper. Yes, this is a year of transfer into our lives, God. Amen. We receive the supernatural transfer. Amen. We receive the supernatural appointments. We receive those supernatural uh, opportunities, Father. Amen. A divine increase falling into our lives uh, as never before, my God, the eye have not seen, the ear have not heard. What the Lord has in hold for us, we receive all of that. Minister unto us. We subject ourselves to your ministry. Amen. Have your way. Your will be done in our lives, in Covenant Fusion Church, in the United States of America, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us partake in this by faith. And I think we have our offering also. Let's also sow our tithes and offerings as we do that. If you are writing a check, write it to Covenant Fusion uh, 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 Church. Or if you are going online, go to covenantfusion.com and we have tightly PayPal over there. You are welcome to participate and I'm thankful for all the faithful support from the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God is in the business of multiplying us. Amen? Amen. Amen. I am so thankful. I know people are not, well, some of our family members, the church family members are not here today. But I'm here to extend my love to you and all the people that are joining all over the world. I'm here to extend our love. We are here to fight this thing together. Yes. You know, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing greater things than this. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, I miss you being here in person, but I I'd rather you be strong with me in the spirit. I want us to stand strong in agreement in that power of faith that we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's get into the word today. As you know, we are studying on the mantle. This is the uh, uh, word that the Lord have given uh, uh, to me for this year, where there is transfer that is happening in our lives. 
The Lord has positioned a transfer into our lives. A divine transfer. Remember, transfer requires position. If you don't position, you miss it. But God is giving us an opportunity saying that, hey, I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to be missing this because the Lord has reserved us for His glory. Reserved us for a time like this. You know, I don't know about you. Sometimes I, sometimes uh, accident, whether it is accidental or wishful or however it may be you may call it, I wish I was in a different era. I kind of like being in that um, uh, old, uh, old, old lifestyle and things like that. I kind of like that. But there was a time the Holy Spirit had to quicken me. I have appointed you just in the right time. Amen. In the right place. Amen? Amen? Why am I here, Lord? What am I doing here? You know, you are appointed by God just in the right time. Now, I believe God has appointed us to be his end-time harvesters. End-time harvesting is different. Remember, remember this thing. He who sows in tears will reap in what? Joy. Will reap in? Joy. Okay. They sowed in tears in the beginning. The church began with tears. They cried. There was so much of death. There was so much of loss. There was so much of chaos. But now is the time to reap in joy. This is the end time harvest. If you want to reap the end time harvest, you best be ready to reap it in joy. You know, you can never have joy. You, you're not going to have that heart joy if you are struggling. So this harvest I'm talking about is not just a, a, a spiritual one. It, though it has the source of spiritual life, it has the not natural things, normal things, common things. Because uncommon is coming, so we will have all the common as well. Amen. In this world you will have them, hundredfold Bible says. Bible says hundredfold. If anyone gave up a house or, 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 or uh, uh, anything, if he had given up for my sake or my gospel's sake, he says, mother or children or wife or what not, if he had given up anything, if you had given up anything for my sake or for my gospel's sake, anybody here have given up anything for gospel's sake? Amen. You gave up so much. In many cases, you even gave up your reputation. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Family started shunning you because you are not one like them. Mm -hmm. People around you didn't like you so much because you are not thinking like them. You have been boxed and cornered. But now but God, Jesus himself said, Surely, you will have hunger for now and eternal life. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. Let me tell you something. God doesn't need the gold from this earth there. God doesn't need the peace on this earth there. Remember, he gave the peace from there to here. Right? Yes. Peace on earth. He brought the peace. We don't take anything back there. There is so much there. So may as well take advantage of it right here. Amen. My joy is getting overflowed. My peace is getting overflown. Right, right now, that is what we are. That is the transfer. We are appropriating the transfer. My bank balance is getting overflow. My health is getting overflow right now in the name of Jesus. What are we doing? Now, look at this. Look at this. Imagine yourself. I might be grossing you out, but bear with me, right? Imagine yourself as a channel in a reservoir. Like when the gate is open, what happens? The water is flowing. What are you doing when you are opening your mouth? You're opening the gates. Yeah. Let those gates be the gates of heaven when they open up. Hey, my bank balance is going to be supernaturally abundant. Amen. 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 Not only I'm going to pay for my bills, I'm going to take care of someone else's. Amen. Not only my, I am debt free, I'm going to pay off someone else's debts in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Imagine that, imagine that. You know, I have worked so much, 30 years of mortgage, but God is saying, hey, 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 three minutes with me is more than enough for you. 
God showed that to us through Esther. One night stand changed all of her life. One day she was a slave, next day she is the queen. God have done so many things like that. All of a sudden, bam, you're there. And I'm expecting those kinds of things this year. Maybe you are struggling. You barely made it through this far. But tomorrow, once you've gotten the first one, it is no longer going to be the delay. All of them are going to go with you. Amen. All of them are happening just like that. You know, I kept continually saying this. I want you to have this word in your mouth. It's happening. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Come on, touch your neighbor and say it's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. Come on now. Let's get excited. It's happening. It's happening. Because the transfer, we are appropriating. What are we doing? We are becoming the channels. Lord, it's happening right now. It's happening, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. The resurrections are happening around me in the name of Jesus. Yes. It's happening. It's yeah. happening. Don't participate in the Babylonian system where it says it's not happening. Where it is saying it is empty shelves, where you are saying I have abundance in my house. Yeah. My house will not lack a thing in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glory be to God in heaven. Glory be to God in heaven. When everybody around you are lacking, you shall not lack in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody, let us Amen. declare it. I Amen. shall not lack. Glory be to God in heaven. That is the call that God has given us. Will you respond to it? Will you respond to it? Oftentimes we look at our call as, okay, Call is only for us to go preach the gospel. No, no, no. To be his ambassadors is our call. Amen. To be his sons and daughters is his call. Amen. To be somebody who reaps his harvest is his call. Amen. Yes. Let us not be little God by limiting him to one or two things that we feel are godly. We attest and we try to say, oh, this is godly, this is ungodly. Who used to say? <laughs> Who are you? Like, you know, the southern saying, Who done died and made you Jesus? <laughs> Let God be God. Let God be true. And all of mine be lies. I don't care. I don't need me. I think we need to acknowledge that. I don't need me. I need more of God. Mm -hmm. Not me. Not me, because I am good at messing things. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> All of us, if somebody is saying I'm not, then there is something wrong with them. <laughs> yeah, they're liar. We need to cast those lying spirit out of them. Yeah. So he says, uh, I'm going back to our original text, which is in the uh, 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 book of uh, First Kings 19th chapter 19th verse. I just want to go back to it. Because that is the transfer that is happening there. I want us to understand. We study it again and again and again. You know, I just have a, 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 a one, one, one time a, a, a man in a congregation came to the pastor. And he told him, you've been preaching on this for the whole year. The same thing. Same thing you've been preaching for the whole year. And I am so, I mean, he was so upset and disappointed with that. And the pastor looks at him, yet you didn't get it. I've been, <laughs> I've been preaching it for whole one year, yet you still didn't get it. So I'm here to tell you, until we get it, we are staying here. All right. Okay. Until we get it. Because we want to get it because we don't want to miss God's opportunity. <clears throat> I know you guys are some hungry folk here. I don't need to be telling again and again there is food. Because we are hungry. We are hungry for God. We are hungry to see God working in our place. We are hungry to see God work in our lives. We are hungry to see God work in our nation. We are hungry in the name of Jesus. Amen. So when we are hungry, God promises, I will provide for you. Amen. I will feed you. So he departed from there, Elijah, and found Elisha. Found Elisha. Did God find you? Did Jesus find you? Yes. We didn't find her. 
He found us. Amen. He found us. If it wasn't for His grace and mercy, you know you lost. <coughs> You know you're, go you're going to hell in a handbasket, right? We all know that. But He found us. He found us and He purposed us. Elisha doesn't even know what is coming His way. You, might, you and me, we may not know what is coming our way. But we positioned ourselves not to bow before Baal. That's all. <laughs> we have been tempted to give up many times. We have been told this is the end. We have been told you are all a mess. We have been told many things, but yet we are standing. Yes. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. He was with the twelve, then Elijah passed by and threw his mantle on him. Can somebody say, threw his mantle? Through his mantle. I want you to remember, imagine Jesus when he was walking in the shore, on the shores of Galilee, in those small towns when he was going, what was he doing? Come follow me, what was he doing? He's throwing his mantle. He still is throwing his mantle even today. Many of them that have come to follow him have not understood what mantle does to them. Because they were coming to him for bread and fish. Remember Jesus had to rebuke them. I know you have come because I fed you yesterday. Many of us are still going to Jesus to find a piece of bread, to find a small favor, to small, find some little trink, trinkets of goodness of God. But God is promising, no, no, no. I want you to come live in the abundance of what I have for you. Amen. What I have planned and proposed for you. That's why he has, he's asking, follow me, follow me, follow me. That is part of the transfer. Jesus operated in the transfer. Now is the hour for us to walk in the transfer. Imagine that. He did the world changing mission in three years. In three years. He changed the whole world dynamic. Are you with me? Like it or not, any society, if it has anything good, it came from Christ. If it wasn't for Christ, there is no such thing. Any society you go to the whole wide world. <clears throat> so stop buying to this notion of all religions are the same. Amen. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah. Amen. That is not the, that is not the way it, it works. <laughs> and then the, the, when, when he passed by, he threw his mantle on him. Now, now look at this. He is just passing by. These are opportunities. If you have, that's why Jesus calls, he who has ears, let him hear yeah. what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking. If you don't hear, you miss it. Yeah. Sometimes I tell you, it's time for us to shut up. Because we are too loud. We are too loud, chattering, yapping, and all those kinds of things, complaining. Instead of hearing. What time is it? It's time to hear time to hear. When you hear, you respond. Let the word of the Lord, let it, let it resonate in your spirit that you can hear. And let the babe leap in you. Let that vision leap in you. Let the purpose of God leap in you. Let the vision that is dead, that you thought is dead, let it leap in you. I'm telling you, some of you have given up on your visions. God is telling, I'm here to stir them up. You thought the baby is aborted, but I'm here to tell you, he is only asleep. Talita kumi. Talita kumi. Little one, wake up. Everybody thought it is dead. Why bother the teacher? She is dead. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. She's just sleeping. She's just sleeping. There are so many things that God has given us. God has positioned us. God fell asleep. Let this word be heard that these things will be woken up. Yes. Things that are inside be woken up. Visions that are inside be woken up. Because I'm coming in agreement for the bigness of God. Jesus, because Jesus has come in agreement for us to have that. 
Amen. 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 He says, please let me kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you. And he said, go back for what I have done to you. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Now look at this. What is, what is Elisha doing? He is coming in agreement with Elijah. He is coming into that unity with him. Maybe we need to stop being busy buddies and come in unity with him. Come in unity with his plan. We are so distracted these days. The devil wants you to be distracted in so many day, things. But I'm here to challenge every one of you, sick or not, poor or not, healthy or not, I don't care, let's come in unity. It's time that we position ourselves, let's destroy these yoke of oxen. Whatever it is that is taking your place, Whatever it is that is trying to drive your emotions, whatever it is that is trying to drive you away from the plan of God, there is nothing on this earth is worth losing your shot. That's what I, my, my belief is. I don't know about you. I can't believe for you. You've got to believe. If that is your priority, yeah, get ready for the transfer. Get ready for the transfer, divine transfer happening around you. Amen. Until we come into that agreement, you cannot have it. Okay. It's as simple as that. Until the woman agrees with the man, you can. Until then, there is no child. <laughs> there is no child. The same way, Jesus is waiting for someone to say, Yes, you can, Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. I need you to have your way, have your transfer in me, through me, and for me. This is where the first part I'm talking about. He is coming in agreement. He is coming into unity with God's plan. Mm -hmm. He's coming in agreement with God's plan. Can I, can I, you know, what happened in the day of Pentecost? <coughs> the first day, what happened? There was that unity. I think there should be a rebuke there. We need to stop being a, a mass production. Every individual here has to bring something to the altar. Hallelujah. Every individual has been commissioned to bring something to the altar. Because God has not given me some faith and you a different faith. Bible says he gave us the portion of faith. Every one of us have the portion of faith. Can I can we sound it out loud? I have the portion of faith. Come on somebody. I have the portion of faith. We, we need to come to a place that is unity. Unity is not just get along or let me go along with it. No, no, no. I'm going to bring you something. Yeah. I'm going to bring something to it. You know, there was a time there is a, a celebration happening in the village. And uh, usually in the villages in, uh, uh, in that particular place has a habit when, when the celebration is happening. Everybody brings a thing, a pitcher of milk mm. that they have. It's in a village. So they bring a pitcher of milk. So everybody uh, is supposed to bring a pitcher of milk. That's how the community operates. That's how the community uh, works with each other. This time somebody decides, okay, hey, all the other 99 people are bringing the uh, milk, so if I just bring a pitcher of water, it won't make a difference. So they bring water. And after it was poured and, and after this is done and somebody went to go and inspect it and when they were inspecting it, everything there is water. There was no milk. Because everybody thought someone else will do it. 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 I'm here to challenge everyone. It is not someone else's job. It is your job. Are you with me here? It is my job. Come on, church. It is my job. 
My job is to bring something to the altar. My job is to use that mustard seed of faith. My job is to live by faith. My job is to position myself to access that transfer. It is my job, not anybody else's. I will do my job. I don't care whether you do it or not. I'm getting there. But as, a, as your pastor, I have to be concerned for you because we have to get there. We all have to get there. That is why I'm trying to stir up the pot. I'm trying to stir up our spirits so we can all charge up our faith and let us walk into this thing. <laughs> Maybe you are facing some odd situations and circumstances to now. It doesn't feel like I am up for some sort of a pep talk or some sort of a pep journey, but I'm here to challenge you. Your answer is there. If you stay here, you're never moving. You're never moving. You got to move. You know why? The cloud left us. We got to go where the cloud is. We got to go where the cloud is. I have learned something from in my life. That there is grace from God. And always that grace moves. People are, so many people are stuck in the permissible will of God. When they should be driven by the perfect will of God. I don't want what God gives a sinner for me. Are you with me? Jesus says, I, I, I bring son on sinner and the righteous. I don't want the common blessing, I want the uncommon. Are you with me on that? I want the uncommon because I've been following. I have not bowed before bear. I have not bowed my hand without giving my tithe. I have not given up my hope. I have not given up my faith. I have not given up on anything. Why would I want to miss this? Mark 4, 35, 41. I thought I started the message. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Mark 4, 35, 41. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. What did Jesus say? Let us cross over to the other side. Are you with me? Yes. Come on. I want us to listen to this thing. What is Jesus' instruction? He wasn't just telling you, let us see what happens. He wasn't saying that. Instead, he is saying, let us cross over to the other side. Yeah. I, for me, like to take that as a command over my life. Amen. As a command over my life. No matter what you are going through, uh, this command has to be appropriated. Jesus said, let me cross over this. Jesus has commanded, let me cross over this thing. Jesus has commanded, I need to cross over cancer. Jesus have commanded, I need to cross over my debt. Jesus have, uh, Jesus have commanded, I need to have things my own. Jesus have commanded, I need to cross over my depression. Are you with me here? Yes. You have to appropriate that command in our lives. When he said, let us cross over to the other side, it belongs to all of us. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in a boat he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and waves beat into the boat, so it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Amen. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? It's a totally different realm Jesus is calling us into. It's a totally different realm. Uncommon. 
Come on, somebody, shout it out. Uncommon. God is, Jesus is positioning ourselves. The mantle that he has thrown on us is not for common things, just for you to survive, just for you to barely get by, but instead get into the uncommon. You will find things that you did not see before. You will reap things that you have not labored for. Are you with me here? Yes. But what God catches my attention in this whole passage is this. The 35th, 36th verse. At the end of that verse where it says, And other little birds were also with him. He was going on a big board and the other little birds were also with him. A few months ago the Lord had given me a vision. The Lord had given me a vision about a big boat plowing through and making its way to go front. And in that same vision he shows the small little boats that are around it took advantage and went in the same direction. Yeah. And they were able to go to the same destiny that the big boat went. Okay. I'm still pondering on it what all it, it means. God has not given fully all the instruction for me on that. But what I understood is he is talking about this story. So I want to study all around it and glean off of everything so I may be positioned once he says it is time I'm ready. Amen. Are you with me now? Yes. yes. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just want to prepare. The only way I can lose my opportunity is if I don't prepare. Amen. Yes. So I'm preparing myself here. I want us to dwell around this story to figure out, okay, what is going on here? As we are pondering on this, I pray the Lord will stir up your spirit and get ready for something that He is going to be doing with us. There are a few things that we can learn here. The other little birds were also with him. I'm here to challenge you, sir. There are so many ways that I can interpret. Yes, if wherever Jesus went, you're going. Are you with me on this? Yes. Wherever Jesus went, you are going. You can turn it off. Wherever Jesus is going, you are going too. That's what he promised to us. Ex you know, <laughs> more things than what I have done. Amen? Amen? He promised us that we will be able to do greater things than what He have done. Yes. Are you with me now? Yes. That's the plowing that we are after. And now that's one imagination. The second imagination I want you to have. The big board is you. Big board is you. Because you made it, you then also have to make it to the other side. Are you with me? Yeah. If you are free, your debt is also getting free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you are free, your sickness is also getting free. Yeah. If you are free, your family is also getting free. Yeah. If you are saved, your family is also getting saved. Yeah. Come on somebody, the little birds are coming. Yeah. Are you with me? Come on, come on. The little birds are coming. Come on now. The little birds are coming. Glory be to God in heaven. You are not alone. You are not the only one that is going to go. You be taking so many with you. Amen. You don't need to worry about how am I going to lock them. You just go, they are coming. You just go, they are coming. Because the Bible, God promised, give me your tithes. Bring your tithes to the storehouse and test me if I do not rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. Are you with me here? Yes. That's the plowing he have already done. Let the big ship have at it so we can just follow it. Okay, the devourer can't stop me. <laughs> We're just following the suit. And now, let's also imagine ourselves to be the big board where we are making the way. So because we are making the way there, we are also bringing all these things into the blessing. My car will be blessed. My house will be blessed. My marriage will be blessed. My children will be blessed. My children's children will be blessed. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. 
And not only that, I'm here to tell you something else. There are so many lives that are around that are stuck in the middle of the storm. There are so many things in affairs on this earth that are stuck in the storm. There is one board that is plowing through this thing. That is his church. Amen. Amen. That is his church. There ought to be the church that plows through. There are all these little things that are stuck in the storms of recession. The storms of lack. The storms of depression. The storms of fear. All those things that are, they are stuck in it. And when you plow through the church. The body of Christ needs to lead and not follow. When we can lead all these people that are bound in the bondage, they're just stuck with Jesus. There are many people accidentally got stuck with Jesus, you know. There are so many systems that are out there that are accidentally stuck with Jesus. One other system is this nation. The United States of America where it declared, in God we trust. Amen. It's stuck. Wantingly or unwantingly, it got stuck, so it has to go. If the church can lead, that's why it is important for the pulpit to be restored. That's why it is important for the pulpit to follow, lead and not follow. Amen. Yes. If the pulpit can lead, and as it is leading, and as it is going forward, the little birds are coming. They are getting saved in the droves. Because you are executing your salvation. Many of us have not exec executed our salvation, you know. We haven't. We think salvation is just going to heaven. Yeah. Salvation is living heaven on earth. Amen. Right. Salvation is living heaven on earth. Remember, remember, the angels have been sent as a ministering spirit to whom? The heirs of salvation. Hebrews first chapter if you want to go there. But here I want you to think about this one. Where God said, hey, where Jesus is saying, I, he was leading the way for us. He already said, I led the way for you. I have made, I have lived in the uncommon. <coughs> I know one thing and one thing for sure. As long as he lived on this earth, he didn't lack one good thing. I'm here for, to ask the Lord of Harvest to accelerate my harvest. To accelerate our harvest. Lord, we need it. And we need it now. We are here, Lord. Maybe I'm limping. Maybe I'm crawling. God, you know what? I am. I'm going to do everything possible to get to the other side. Yeah. I know you have given me the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go with him. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm renewing my strength to cross the line. To cross over. Deuteronomy 6th chapter. Deuteronomy 6th chapter. What are you crossing over into? Deuteronomy 6th chapter starting at verse 10. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you, look at this, to give you, not for you to work. Are you with me here? Yes. This is transfer I'm talking about. To give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. Houses. Did he say houses? Houses. houses. It was his saying, not mine. Houses. Let it sink in your head. Houses. Houses full of all good things. Yes. This is where my scripture comes to believing that equipped with people and things. An existing church is fine. Okay. Come on now. If God wants to transfer that to me, 
I'm not opposing you. I'd rather have it. Amen. I'm fine with it, Daddy. <laughs> if they don't want their one talent, remember, the talents guy never complained when one extra talent was given to him. I take it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with taking what is mine, what is being given to me by the Lord. Amen. This is not something a man is giving to us. This is not something your paycheck is giving to you. This is not something your desire is giving to you. But your, you, your vision is bringing, God's vision, God's plan and purpose for you is bringing these things to pass. That is what Jesus said, let us go to the other side. No, look at this. He is being very clear to you. Which you did not fill. Hewn out wells which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. Are you with me? Yeah. Without sweat. Mm -hmm. Without sweat. That is transfer. Somebody is lazy. Let us not be that lazy people. Let us be those wise people that will inherit this. That will receive the transfer. Appropriate the transfer. Greater things are happening in and for me and through me. Hallelujah. We position ourselves all the, all the time. We are appropriating ourselves. This is happening right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This building is happening right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. My deliverance is happening right now in the name of Jesus. Name. My daughter's salvation is happening right now in the name of Jesus. Name Jesus. America is being saved right amen. now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Colombia is being saved right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Costa Rica is being saved in the name of Jesus. Amen. India is being saved in the name of Jesus. Puerto Rico is being saved in the name of Jesus. Ireland is being saved in the name of Jesus. Nigeria is being saved in the name of Jesus. China is being saved right now in the name of Jesus. Israel is being saved in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God in heaven. Let us plow through this. Let us plow through this. So we may show to the world that our God is good. Amen. But he gives a caveat. He gives an instruction. When you have eaten and are full, then beware. Beware. Lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. I'm here to challenge everyone and encourage everyone and even introduce. Let us welcome the God of abundance. Maybe you barely survived. It is time for you to prosper. It is time for you to prosper. The Lord has set us up for prosperity. Now our struggle, our struggle should not be a struggle of lack, but a struggle of prosperity and abundance. That's a different struggle. Okay. <laughs> our mindset has to change. When you don't have enough, you are always seeking the face of the Lord. When you have more than enough, there is a different temptation that comes your way. Now we need to prepare ourselves to face the giants of abundance. Because we have done with, we are done with the giants of lack. Are you with me now? Yes. I am done with the giants of lack. I am about to face the giants of abundance. I am facing the giants of abundance, so I'm preparing myself, even when I have the abundance, I will not lose by Jesus. Amen. That's our preparation. You know, one time a man of God was talking about, uh, 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 you know, if you are believing God for, to be a millionaire, you need to start acting like one. One of the things he gave me, I was like, I was stunned to hear that example. I'm like, Stop squeezing your tooth, toothpaste at the end. <laughs> there is no millionaire trying to get himself a rock to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste out of that, that, that tube. 
Are you with me now? Yes. It's a mindset shift <laughs> that has to shift. We need to stop living in the lack and move to the abundance. If you don't change your mindset like that, you will never inherit it. Okay. Because you are not serving the God of lack anymore. You are now positioned to serve the God of abundance. Amen. You know, you're not serving the God who meets your needs, but you are getting ready to serve the God who gives you all things richly to enjoy. Yes. Then he gives the instruction, you shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods. Amen. Let not the things have you. Yes. Throw them at the feet of Jesus. Every single thing you got, make it something God can get glory out of it. I don't care what it is, God have, for, have at it. The first thing, whatever comes to you, when God is giving you, get ready to give it away. Okay. Are you with me now? Yes. When your mind is set to it, you become unstoppable. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are all around you. Maybe there are millionaires that doesn't know how to live with God, but you are a new breed. That's right. Amen. Maybe there are people who have survived cancer, they didn't know how to glorify God, but you are a different breed. Are you with me now? Yes. <laughs> how about second chapter? I'm going there. I'm, I'm, I'm about, about to finish. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Write the vision. That's why. Write it. Write it. Make it plain on tablets. That he may run who reads it. I'm here to tell you something. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. Can you give an opportunity for your vision to speak? That is what God is calling us today for the unity of faith and vision. The unity of faith and vision. Let that speak. Give it an opportunity to speak. He says, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will not. It will not. It is coming. It's coming. Because that's what God wants us to get after. Get, it's coming, man. I'm going to give it to you. Come on. Come Sit me. with me. Come Sit with me. me. Walk with me. Run with me. Fly with me. No matter what it takes. I'm going to go there, Lord. If I got to walk, I will walk. If I got to crawl, I will crawl. If I got to run, I will run. If I got to fly, I'm going to fly. Yes. Remember, God gave all methods of transportation there where he said, They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings like eagles. They will walk and not faint. They will run and not go weary. So he departed. Now he gives the instruction, fourth verse, where he says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. But the just shall live by, by faith. his faith. Amen. Amen. That's the challenge of the hour. That's the prerequisite of the hour. That is the secret of Pentecost. The just shall live by whose faith? Come on somebody. The just shall live by his faith. Your faith. My faith matters. My faith matters. My faith is making this happen. That is the spirit of unity that God is calling. Not someone else's faith. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Everybody's faith. When we are coming into that faith and that unity of vision, glory be to God, He is about to manifest like Amen. never before. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. Glory be to God in heaven. Hallelujah. God is calling us, our mission, our mission and responsibility for us is to cover the gaps. He wants us to cover the gaps. There are things that are missing. Many people have left the harvest. 
We let it go into the hands of the enemy. We have let the enemy have its field day. Amen. It's time that we stand. We step up. We stretch our, our, our nets. We stretch our nets bigger than you can imagine. When Jesus said, cast your nets, we ain't going to cast one net. We're going to cast nets. Many. Are you with me now? Yes. Now, the, uh, there are a few statements from the observation I want to state to you and co close it. No society can do well jeopardizing his choice or his chosen. I'm talking about the storm when Jesus was in the boat. The whole world, if you imagine yourself as the world, the whole world around them is the water. That chosen one, God, that's the job, God's chosen plan. His chosen one is there. His chosen church is here. No society can do well jeopardizing his choice or chosen. Your well-being is their well-being. That's why it is important his choice or his chosen also includes the well-being of others. If you do well, they will do well. The world doesn't know what salvation is, but you do. When you can plow through with that salvation, with your Savior, with your Redeemer, with, with the one who makes things possible when it is impossible... Now my question to you is, are you going to give an opportunity for the vision to speak? Are you going to give an opportunity for the vision to speak? You living by faith. Take it to the end line, man. Take it to the end line. Don't give up because it doesn't seem like it's working. Okay. Don't give up because it seems like it is too far-fetched. Don't give up. Because God needs us to be taking it to the end. That's what Paul and Peter did. They ran their race, they said. I finished my race. Unity, look at this. Unity in faith will drive the momentum of the transfer. The transfer that God has set for us, it is going to be driven by the unity in faith. Unity in faith will drive the momentum of the transfer. I want you to remember again, unity in faith doesn't mean sing along. It doesn't mean sing along. That is, that is not what God is calling. Let everyone pitch in. Let everyone pitch in. Remember I mentioned this some time ago. As a, as a token. As a, as a token of participation in this thing. You know. Uh, uh, I personally uh, believe it is a good thing to do. Um, I am sowing a seed during this time of fasting. Because I want this special seed that I want to sow. As a token of participation in this thing. I know I gave a call for all these times whenever you feel like doing it, do it. But next Sunday, I really would mention and take up the offering at that hour. If you come prepared, come prepared so we can all come in agreement. If you have already sown, if you have already made that commitment, we are going to come into that agreement. Amen. Amen. I want us to see that transfer. I want to take it to its end it deserves. Finally, it has to happen so he may be glorified. Remember, we are end time harvesters. There is a lot of blood that has been shed. There is a lot of tears that have been shed. Now it is time for us to reap the harvest. Somebody out there in India, I'm challenging you. St. Thomas shed his blood on this, on that land. It is time that we reap the harvest from that blood for the whole nation, the, United, the India, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, every bill, every corner, every person, every nation, every person from different backgrounds shall be saved. 
Amen. The Lord has to pay. There are so many missionaries that have come to different Amen. lands and they sacrifice their life. You think it's going to go in vain? No. It's time for us to seek that harvest. Amen. To reap that harvest. To appropriate that harvest. You and me may be the direct harvesters. May not be. I'm going to send somebody who wants to go there if I can't go. Amen. Are you with me now? Yes. Amen. But for sure, by God's grace, we are going to reap the harvest. Let us take it to the end. Amen? Amen? Let's all stand up in the presence of the Lord. We're going to end the service. We're going to end the service with our confession. Is God stirring up your spirits? Glory be to God. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone. Let us get excited. Because God is turning the tables. The tables are turned. It has already been executed. Amen. Let us execute it in our lives. Amen. Appropriate it. Tell it. Whether whatever that struggle is, tell it. You gotta flip. You gotta flip. In the name of Jesus. You gotta move in the name of Jesus. It has already been done in the heaven. I'm only telling you what to do as it, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. You gotta flip. Sickness, you can't live in my body. You have been executed out. You have been sent to hell. Hey, you got to flip. You got to flip. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get into our confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are filled for His glory. Glory be to God in heaven. We love you. God bless you. Let us expect great things from God. See you soon. We are out. Amen. Amen.